Welcome back grade nines to Tuma Mina teaching. You are tuned in for your first lesson in term two for EMS. If you are new to our channel, please take note of the following. EMS consists out of three sections. In the previous series, we had a look at the financial literacy section of EMS. In this series, we will have a look at the economics and entrepreneurship section of EMS. If you are new to our channel, you can go and check out our previous lessons. My name is Shante Manuel, and this is my contribution to Tuma Mina teaching. All right, grade nines, let's take a look at what we will be focusing on this lesson. Are you ready? Let's hit the ground running. It is very important, grade nines, to always make sure that you revise the previous lesson's work. By doing so, you will be certain to keep up with the work that we are busy with or catch up on anything you may have missed. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription icon below. That way, you will always be updated with the new lessons that we have ready for you. You can also share it with all your friends. If you are anything like me, we absolutely love shopping and seeing all of the products and customers enjoying all of the bargains that there are. This shopping mall grade nines is known as a market. A market is a place, physical or virtual, where there is a reasonable expectation of finding both buyers and sellers trading goods and services. This shopping mall, grade nines, is known as a physical market. But if I get too tired of too many people surrounding me, I can just snap my fingers and enjoy shopping online. This is known as a virtual market. Long time ago, markets looked a little different than today. Money was not used as a currency to buy and sell goods and services. Back then, markets were formed through barter trade. You learned about barter trading in grade 7. Pause this video and tell your teacher what barter trading is. Could you remember what barter trading is? Barter trading is the exchange of goods and services between two or more parties without the use of money. This means that if I have a bag of juicy oranges, but would rather like a bag of sweets instead, I would have to find someone that is interested in a bag of oranges and who has a bag of sweets that would like to trade with me. In the modern day, we buy and sell items using money. One person offers the products in exchange for money. We know that we can also trade on financial markets. An example of this is Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. Money has a very large influence on the types of products and services that consumers buy and suppliers sell. Let's play a quick game to explain this concept better. Do you see this amazing milkshake? It looks delicious, right? Let's say the price of this milkshake is 5 Rand. How many of you would be interested in buying this milkshake? Raise your hand for me, please. I thought so. 
nearly everyone's hands are raised in the classroom. But let's say that there is a price change. The price of this milkshake has increased to 15 rand. How many of you would buy this milkshake now? Still quite a few of your hands have been raised. Let's do another price increase. The price of this milkshake is now 35 rand. How many of you would still be interested in buying this milkshake? A few hands have dropped, but there are still a few interested. Last price increase. The price of this milkshake is 45 rand. Who would still be willing to buy this milkshake? Mm, I can see that majority of the hands have been put down. So what have we learned now? Consumers like you and I would much rather spend less money on an item that we really like. In that way, we'll be able to buy loads of products. Okay, grade nines, let's flip the script. We are now the restaurant supplying this very delicious milkshake. Do you think that we will sell this milkshake for a higher or a lower price to our consumers? I'm sure most of you would agree with me that we would sell it for a higher price. The reason for this is we would like to make as much money as possible. In this lesson, we will have a look at the demand for goods and services and how this is determined in the economy. Demand is the different quantities of products or services that consumers are willing to buy at various prices. Let's take a moment to elaborate on this definition. You are a consumer in the South African market and would like to buy stationery. Would you rather buy more stationery at a cheaper price or less stationery at a more expensive price? Pause this video and have a discussion with your classmates on what you would do in this scenario. Are you ready? Three, two, one. I'm sure that all of you have your own opinions regarding this scenario. Most of you might have said that you would definitely buy more stationery at a cheaper price. The moment a product or service is sold for a cheaper price, there is a greater demand for it. So let's have a look at the law of demand. As the price of goods or services increase, consumer demand for the goods or service will decrease and vice versa. The demand and price of a good or service is inversely related, meaning if the one goes up, the other one will go down. There are multiple factors on why the demand for a product or service would change other than a price fluctuation. The first factor is the change in income of consumers. When consumers earn more income, they tend to buy more items. But if they earn less money, they will buy less of an item. The second factor is the change in consumer tastes. You know that as you grow older, you have certain needs and wants that you are no longer interested in. For example, do you still play with Barbie dolls or action figures? Probably not. So the demand for these products have decreased because your taste changed. A third factor is the change in trends. An example of a product that used to be extremely trendy was a flip phone. Previously, many people wanted a phone that could flip the screen up and down and they were willing to pay a certain price for it. However, the phones changed and touchscreen phones became more popular, changing the tastes of consumers.
Sometimes the price for specific items is irrelevant. An example of this would be someone that is diabetic. They are in need of insulin and regardless of how much the insulin costs, they will always use and purchase it. Grade nines, it's extremely important to note that in this lesson, we've only focused on three factors for changing the demand of a product or a service. In class, you may have studied more factors and it's important to study what your teacher taught you. Let's get to the fun part and plot the demand curve or graph. We will use Canva as an example. Do you remember Canva? As we know, Canva is a barista that sells the most delicious coffee to the public. Let's see what happens to the demand for his coffee when the price changes. The following schedule indicates the demand for Canva's coffee at various prices. We can see that the heading for this schedule reflects the demand schedule for coffee. On the left, we have various prices for each cup of coffee. On the right, we see the quantities of coffees demanded at the various prices. We can immediately see that more customers will buy coffee at a very cheap price and fewer customers will buy coffee at a more expensive price. We will now plot the demand graph and curve by using the schedule provided. We will always start with a heading for the demand graph. On the graph, we will always have the price on the y-axis and the quantity demanded on the x-axis. Great, now we can start plotting the graph. If Canva sells coffee at 5 rand a cup, the quantity demanded will be 2 cups of coffee. If he sells it at 4 rand a cup, the quantity demanded will be 4 cups of coffee. At 3 rand a cup, the quantity demanded will be 6 cups of coffee, and so forth. We can see that at 1 rand per cup of coffee, the quantity demanded will be 10 cups of coffee. Many consumers will be interested in coffee sold at the cheapest price. We now need to connect the dots to indicate the demand curve. The demand curve is a downward sloping curve, moving from left to right, as it reflects a negative relationship between the price and quantity demanded. There is a negative relationship between quantity and price. So when the one goes up, the other one will go down. Grade nines, it is so important that you earn all your marks during the exams. So let's take a closer look at how marks will be awarded for this type of question. You will earn points for the heading the indication of the X and Y axes, as well as naming the respective axes and then finally plotting the graph. Now it's your turn to practice drawing the demand curve. Here we have the demand schedule for breakfast muffins sold at IKC. Use the graph sheet in the comment section below. Alternatively, if you cannot access it, you can draw your own demand graph in your book. Are you ready? Let's pause this video so that you can complete the activity effectively. Did you manage to complete it? Let's see if you got it right. Done great nines. 
you have just completed your first lesson for term two. In the next lesson, we will have a look at the supply in markets. Remember to test your knowledge by scanning the QR code next to me. Also, please go and revise today's lesson so that you are ready for lesson two. And if you enjoyed this lesson, go and buy me a coffee. Until next time, bye!